After being a director now for 10 years, I think my greatest challenges and my happiest achievements are more interlinked than what I would initially think. And for me, it's all about creations, about bringing something new to the dance scene. It is challenging to create in any place and certainly in the classical company, but I also um, believe that this is the way uh, to push forward, to have that balance with the existing rep and at all times push for, uh, push for new. It is challenging, but it's given some, probably also some of my best moments as director. Uh, did I want to be a director? Um, I remember when I was still a dancer in the company that it used to be joked about. We used to laugh about it, like, oh, when you become director, I was like, yeah, 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 not me. No, I never had really that, uh, that drive for a position, um, which I hope and think could be one of my strengths, that I, I really care to be a voice and to be able to make some, to influence um, in an area. I, I really appreciate that, but the, the power bit of it is probably what I have, um, what I have most <laughs> discussions with myself on. Because there is power in such a position, and for me that is a very uncomfortable thing as a person. Um, at the same time, I have experienced over the years that if you have power through your position, you need to be extremely aware of it. And the moment it can become dangerous if you're not aware the power you have over other people and other people's life and career. I became a director uh, when I was towards the end uh, of my career as a performer. And uh, I was approached and uh, asked if I would be interested in, in applying for the position. And after a long thinking time, maybe as long as a pregnancy, I, I agreed to put in an application. That's how it happened. Now, we work in an extremely international profession and I've also been fortunate enough to have most of my studies abroad and also working abroad for some periods. And um, it's always interesting to have this. I love the fact that so many people come here all the time. It's very, how could you say, uh, transparent in the way that we're always seen by colleagues through guest teachers, choreographers, set designers, critics. Uh, this is an amazing thing. I still, I am after 10 years extremely grateful to be in such a wonderful house with such wonderful people to work with and I feel at the moment Oslo is providing fantastic things uh, for us as a company to be able to push so I'm very happy to be here and to be here for another period of time. When it comes to contracts with the Norwegian National Ballet I mean um, the work life is protected in Norway, very protected, and we have um, a social system that is taking care a lot of dancers, which I believe is a wonderful thing. And we have different uh, types of contracts. We have, for instance, a young company uh, they're called National, Norwegian National Ballet 2, who, have, who are hired for one year at a time, uh, up to two or maximum three years. Then we have short-term contract, it could be either for the season or for uh, production. And then after a set amount of time, maximum after three years uh, in the main company, you would then go over on a permanent contract, which runs until pension age that is 41. So this is uh, quite special, I think, for Scandinavia. It's not, we're very aware that this is not the situation everywhere in the world. And it creates a different dynamics because it means that you, you have to bring people with you, you have to bring it along. But what I do acknowledge uh, is, can be challenging is that not everybody are here under the same cir um, circumstance, so to say. So you have those that have the social security of a permanent contract and you have those that um, have to wait uh, to know what the future will bring. 
So that, I, uh, I, I really sympathize with that. I think it can be actually tougher here in that way when you're not secured compared to another company where everybody is in the same boat. What we have here, I, in Norway, we have um, a quite strong and wonderful healthcare system so that you are provided if you're injured, if you're sick, you still get your payment. Um, but when it comes to hierarchy, uh, this is surprisingly flat in Norway. So we are, um, it, I think it also comes out of the Norwegian mentality, which is based a lot, the society in itself is based a lot on trust. And it means that there will always be someone abusing a trust system in the society. But our system is not really made for that. And I believe strongly um, to... I believe strongly in supporting and encouraging and trusting my employees. It also means what can also be tough is that with lack of hierarchy, there can be a young dancer all of a sudden, you know, doing a principal part. And this is so you have, you don't have the artistic security, although you have the social security in the Norwegian National Ballet. We have a very strong uh, connection uh, with our school. We are fortunate to have our own school in this very building with uh, young children starting here. So they go here up until they are the age of 15, 16, when they leave for some years either to the Norwegian Academy of Arts or they go also some choose to study abroad before they potentially come back for our young company for the Norwegian National Ballet too and then eventually so that is kind of the route into the our school here is for children and this is it's always different reasons why these systems are different in different countries but here it is that it's a it's a particular place that take care of the schooling of uh, classical dancers between 16 and 18. So but Fortunately, we also have a close connection and they are with us for long projects and they take part in some productions. So we work closely, although we are not situated in the same institution. We are very, very proud to have an international national ballet. And we have 20 dance, uh, 20 different nationalities uh, represented among our dancers. And all together now with the main company and the young company, we are all together about 75 dancers now. Um, and the range of uh, Norwegians, this fluctuates all the time. Uh, apparently we're quite a small country, we're only 5 million people here, but still we have been fortunate to have some wonderful, wonderful talents um, come in. So in, the, in our young company, it's approximately half and half of uh, Norwegians and, uh, and foreign, uh, foreign dancers, while in the main company, yeah, I would, I would have to count again, but it's, uh, it's, most dancers here are, uh, are not from Norway. But we're fortunate to have some very, very strong ones. Uh, the war that is now happening in Europe um, has a big impact on everyone in Europe, on our industry, um, obviously also on this company. Um, one thing is our collaborations that have naturally all stopped when it comes to the Russian regime. Uh, the other situation is um, people fleeing their homes, fleeing their countries from Ukraine, but now also since the war broke out, also from Russia. And we have been very clear from the very beginning in this institution that we absolutely condemned and uh, do not collaborate with states uh, subsidized institutions. We cannot. But when it comes to the individual, the individual artists, uh, they are welcome here. Um, we are, we can't house everybody, but we, we welcome and we take care of those that have come our way. And like many other companies, at the moment, we also have uh, dancers both coming from Russia and from Ukraine uh, in the company. And it feels in the horror of the everything, it feels somehow meaningful to have this meeting point, to be producing art together. I think it's more important than ever. Um, 
dance communities all over the um, the possibility we have through our art form is not to be underestimated. The wide repertory that are in many companies and certainly in ours is an incredible challenge for dancers. I so acknowledge and admire their range of going from something so contemporary and even improvised one day to be doing full-length classical ballets almost at the same time. Uh, this is physically very challenging, also mentally. Uh, we, it's a constant work this, to try to balance how this can be, also so that the, certainly the classical repertoire is not left too long, because if you don't do that, that's also why we invest a lot in the training, in the classes, in wonderful guest teachers who we have here, at, together with our own very strong faculty of ballet masters. So we have, it's, it's a lot of focus on the training, uh, but it's, it's a constant, I can't say, oh, we have a solution. No, this is something you need to constantly work on because uh, constellation of repertory is, it is challenging, it really is. But I am so, um, amazed by dancers of today, what they are able to, um, to produce. The, uh, the repertory for the season that we're in now, I think shows a lot, this range that we're talking about for the dancers, but also in, in styles, uh, reaching hopefully a wide audience. So we started with uh, Cynthia Harvey's, uh, Harvey's Giselle, a very romantic, beautiful, production um, it was very nice for the whole company to be be joining in that in that one following that we have we have now a triple bill with um, some young wonderful choreographers from our own company pieces that we're creating during the pandemics we call them pandemic opportunities uh, Whitney Jensen, Anna Istorea and Samantha Lynch have collaborated and created um, a fawn and a bolero that is uh, put together as a double bill. Here, to finish off with a full company on stage, uh, Giuliano Nunes has uh, created Chopin's Piano Concerto with big music, big dancing, the big great collectives coming together um, in the space. Following that, we have our house choreographer Alan Oyen, recently premiered in Palais Garnier with the Ballet de Nation, Ballet de l'Opera de Paris. Um, his Hamlet complex is uh, coming back, uh, which is always a wonderful thing for us to show such an artist. We then go to um, Paris with a small cast, but this big production, uh, site-specific in the Musée d'Orsay, where our Ibsen family portraits meet the Munch exhibition in, uh, in Musée d'Orsay. So this is happening in November. Uh, then we have Nutcracker for all the families that can get a ticket. We have Cinderella in Ben Stevenson's version. We have a new triple bill with Emma Portner, fantastic uh, Canadian choreographer. Uh, with uh, Balanchine, 
um, Divertimento number 15 and also with Jiri Kilian's 2752. We have uh, Crystal Pite for the first time a full evening co-produced with the Royal Ballet that opens in October in London and we are fortunate to have this production called uh, Light of Passage coming in April. Then we have uh, another co-production that is longly expected and waited with uh, Christian Spuck, his Sleeping Beauty, co in collaboration with Ballet Zürich. So that is uh, finishing the season for us. And then we have a special program, of course, for our junior company, uh, Norwegian National Ballet 2, which also have creations in it. And many also side projects in addition to this, but that's kind of the main the main season. If there was one performance I could do again, oh, it's very hard to pick one, isn't it? I, of course, I go back to Swan Lake. I think it's a, it's a ballet that keeps following you the rest of your life, either in your dreams or in your nightmares, <laughs> probably in a combination. <laughs> you still, you can say Swan Lake to me and I start, I start sweating in my hands still to this day but another i i had also a quite big part of my history outside of the institution so actually what also very much comes into mind is being in the cathedral in my hometown um in a role where i danced when i was young that portrayed the whole a literal figure lit literal figure but still uh Kristin Lavrandsdatter by Sigrid Unset with Marit Moemaune is now our house director. I sometimes think back to that big cathedral and the stone floor and the opportunity I had to be able to tell a story at a very young age. So if I can say two, I will go back to those two. There is never a recipe for what you look for in a dancer and I think also this company shows that quite a large uh, diversity when it comes to types of dancers, backgrounds, nationalities. Um, I, I look definitely for musicality, uh, for movement um, quality, for resistance in the feet, for beautiful port de bras. No, you know, it's a whole, it's a whole wish list, but it comes down to, it comes down to people. And I think what really, really inspires me and what keeps being the best thing with this job, that's the people. And it's to be surrounded with one thing, the artist, the company, but also the, the team that I have here in the Opera House in Oslo. They say it's lonely at the top, but I refuse, you know, <laughs> I refuse to be lonely at the top. And it's... Uh, I'm very grateful for that. It's, um, it keeps making me want to run to work every day. As a director, you always, in a way, dream back to what it means to be part of a company. I sometimes say this to the dancers, that what they have together with each other, that community they share, is something that you, in a way, long for I think uh, a lot later in life because it's so special and sometimes you maybe don't realize just how special until you don't have it anymore you miss your daily schedule you miss your colleagues you miss your time in the dressing room just to focus on yourself but again it's just two different uh, lives and being a director also it's so it is tough. It's you confronted with a lot of your things, and it's. I'm not saying it's easy, but it's also um, very, very rewarding um, in a completely different way. Yeah, it's like a switch in the brain, I think, for me. But it's but the chance to be still be in a creative environment also past your career as a dancer is. Um, it's a wonderful thing. I, it's important to be reminded how, yeah, just how, how fortunate we are to have these positions 
that are lent to, to us and not given to us. I'm lending it and I'm trying to do the best I can on my watch. <laughs>